Let us welcome the servant of God. Caribou Pastor, may God bless you. Amen. Let's celebrate our mom. Praise God. As we are standing, there's a song that I want us to sing. As we sing this song, let me, let's believe God. In the morning as I was praying, God was showing me that today there's going to be healing in the house. And uh, I want us to believe God. And particularly any form of a tumor or swell, which, whatever it is, God is going to remove it. So I want us to get into the spirit. I want us to uh, sing Bwana Mungu na Shanga Kabisa. As we sing this song, I want you to connect to God. I want you to release yourself to the Holy Spirit. And I want you to believe that it's possible in the name of Jesus. Bwana Mungu na shanga kabisa ni kita zama kama vilivyo nyota nguru movitu vingi vyote viumba vyo kwa u so I Oh, yeah, I'm good. Now, 
Yesu moko zi utakaporudi Runa kuimba milele Wote wachu Wejinsi ulivyo Roho yangu Roho yangu Na ikuimbie Jinsi wewe Ulivyo Let's surrender to God. I want us to meditate upon his greatness. The writer of this song was meditating on the greatness of our God. Just think about the universe, the galaxy systems that he built. He was the architect and the builder. Just meditate upon all the great things that he created. He created the moon, the, he created the sun, the moon, and the stars. He is the one who created the depths of the seas. He is the one who raised the mountains. He is a mighty and an awesome God. Oh, the word that I had this morning that all things are possible. He's able, he's well able. Nothing is impossible with our God. Father, this morning we declare your greatness. You are a mighty and a great God. All other gods are but the works of men, but you are God. You are the only true and the living God. And you are well able, you are able, you are able to heal, you are able to deliver, you are able to break yokes, you are able, Jehovah God, to do exceedingly, abundantly much more than we think of or imagine. Father, this morning, as you spoke to my heart, do it, Father. Romoko Sarabashikariba. For in the name of God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, I take power and authority over every power of darkness. Any altar, any altar, any sacrifice, any spell, any power of darkness. Romoko Sarabashikariba that has attacked any person in this place in the name that's above any other name the name of jesus christ i destroy every power i destroy every power of darkness i take power and authority through the power and the mandate that's upon my life and i destroy every power i'm speaking to every form of a tumor I'm speaking to every form of a growth or swell in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I take power over you. I take power over you right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I declare and declare that everybody, every soul, 
represented in this place I'm speaking to every form of a tumor I'm speaking to every swell I'm speaking in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth Roll to every growth in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth I command you right now through the power and authority of this altar and the power that's upon me the mandate of the kingdom of God through the word that was spoken to me this morning I declare every tumor gone in the name of Jesus I speak every tumor blessed tumor I declare and decree any form of a growth Robocosa Shikariba I command you in the name of Jesus Christ I command you to loosen I command you to melt I command you to come out in the name of Jesus Christ in a demon in a demonic power in a satanic power I bind you loosen the people of God Father I declare any form of a sickness any form of sickness that's upon your people i declare that it, they are healed in jesus name by the stripes of jesus christ we are healed father i thank you i exalt you in jesus name amen 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 let's appreciate god as we get seated god bless you singers Amen. Good morning. I said good morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. I want to see the fathers in the house. I want us to celebrate the fathers. Let the fathers stand up. If you are a father, just stand up. We want to recognize you. Today is a special day. It's Father's Day. Fathers are very special people. Let's celebrate them. Yes. Hallelujah. God bless you, fathers, you special people. We recognize you and happy Father's Day. Amen. Amen. It's good to be a father. You know you don't know what it means uh, to be raised up without a father. Those of us who lost our fathers when we are young, we know what happens. Amen. So if you have a father, just send them a message of appreciation today and let them know you love them and you appreciate them. Amen. Amen. Today I want to teach and uh, I want to teach the word of God from Jeremiah chapter 32. Jeremiah chapter 32 and I want us to look at uh, a subject I'm calling holding on to God's word even in times of crisis. Amen. Amen. Holding to God's word even in times of crisis. And uh, I'm going to read in, uh, if time allow, we'll look at other books but uh, I want us to look at Jeremiah chapter 23. Uh, not 23, but 32. I'm sorry. 32. And uh, I want to give a background. I want to give a, a, some background information about this particular chapter. And I want us together to see what happened. I want us to see what happened. And at this particular time, when, uh, when uh, Jeremiah was writing, uh, or this chapter was being written, the, 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 each, uh, the, the country of, uh, or let me say the town of Judah and Jerusalem was under switch. The Babylonians had uh, besieged uh, Jerusalem, uh, Judah and Jerusalem, and uh, it was a very, very desperate moment for the, uh, for, the, for the people of Judah and Jerusalem. And this particular time, when all that was happening, uh, a lot of things were happening in Jerusalem. A lot of things were happening. And you know, when there is a siege work around a city, 
the intention is uh, so that that city may run of supplies. Just think about when a, a, a nation has been sieged, possibly for six months. There is no supplies, no food, at, uh, no water, no drugs. Nobody is coming out of the city and nobody is going in. So it was a very, very desperate moment. And uh, this siege, uh, because of this siege, there is their need. There was need. And there was a, a crisis in the city. And we see the servant of God, Nehemiah, was approached by the king. Let's read, a chapter, let's read verse 1 of chapter 32 of Jeremiah. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord in the 10th year of Zedekiah, king of Judah, which was the 18th year of Nebuchadnezzar. The army of the king of B Babylon was then beseeching Jerusalem and Jeremiah the prophet was confined in the courtyard of the guard in the loyal palace of Judah. The Bible tells us that the city was under switch. And, uh, and uh, Nehemiah, Jeremiah was in prison. Jeremiah was in prison and the city was under siege. And uh, like I said, there was a crisis in the city. There was a crisis because there was no supplies. Nobody was getting into the city and nobody was coming out. So there was their need and there was a crisis in the city. In, in this crisis, we see the king, the king, the king of Judah, Zedekiah, approaching Jeremiah to see counsel what, what they were supposed to do. And uh, a name, a Jeremiah was very, very precise. He had told the king, if you, if the, if you have to save this city, if you, if you have to save this city and its people, then surrender to Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon. And he kept on repeating that message that the easy way out of this crisis is by surrendering to the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, then the city will be saved and its people will be saved. But because of that word that Jeremiah gave to the king, he was put in prison. He was put in prison. And in prison, while he was in prison, God spoke to him again. God spoke to Jeremiah. And this is where I want us to, to be keen. That in that crisis, God spoke to Jeremiah. In times of, you know, if you think about the world you are living in today, it's very important for us, or it's very important for the church and each one of us individually to receive the word of God. To have a rhema word that you can hang on. To have a word that you can hang on. I was thinking about obeying the word of God even in times of crisis. Because in times of crisis, there is a tendency of compromising. People would compromise to live. But in times of crisis, like we are in a crisis, the world in a, is in a crisis. The world economy is collapsing. Social fabrics are collapsing. Families are under attack. Children are under attack. And I want to tell you in times of crisis, the best thing to do is to seek a rhema word, is to obey the word of God and live by the word of God because that's what is going to keep us and sustain us. I was reading this word and uh, let's go to verse, let me, let me uh, read some verses. Let's go to verse... Um, Verse 6, chapter 32, verse 6, I'll read from there downwards. Jeremiah said, the word of the Lord came to me. Hananiel, son of Sharum, your uncle, is going to come and say, buy my field at Ananoth, because as nearest uh, relative, it's your right and duty to buy it. Then just as the Lord had said, my cousin 
Hanamel came to me in the courtyard of the king uh, of the of the garden said buy my field at Anna North in the territory of Benjamin since it's your right to redeem it and possess it buy it for yourself I knew that this was the word of the Lord and I bought the field at Anna North from my cousin Hanameli and weighed out the 17 shekels 17 shekels of silver. Let's look at this one. That uh, Judah and Jerusalem is under switch. And because it was under switch, land was useless. Because they've been attacked by the enemy. Land was valueless. Land was valueless because the enemy had attacked and this and uh, and uh, 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 the enemy had attacked, so land was useless. And uh, Jeremiah is in prison. He's not sure of his fate. He's not sure if he's going to live or he's going to die. And here, the, the uncle's son comes to him and asks him to redeem his land and ask him to buy the land, to buy his land as a kinsman. Anna North was about three miles from uh, Jerusalem. So it was also surrounded. It was at, under attack. People needed money. And nobody was, ready to, nobody was ready to spend because they didn't know what tomorrow holds. They didn't know what the future held. But I see one thing about Jeremiah. And as I was meditating on this word, I see one thing about Jeremiah. When God spoke to him and he's in prison and God told him, your uncle son will come to you. Listen to him. Buy the land. Buy the land. Praise God. And I want you to know the prophet is in prison. The prophet is, doesn't know about his tomorrow. He's not sure about his fate. He's not sure about what's going to happen. He's not sure about Jerusalem. And he knew exactly what was going to happen. That Jerusalem was to be taken over and destroyed. And here he is in the midst of calamity. In the midst of crisis. He says yes to the word of God. And he bought the land. Praise God. And he bought the land. This purchase was irrational if you look at it in all angles. It was irrational. Because you're buying land that's valueless. You're buying land and you're under siege. You're buying land. You're buying land. And, uh, uh, and, uh, and uh, everyone is desperate. Nobody wanted to spend their, their shekels because they were not sure of tomorrow. But I want, I want you to see something here. That even in times of crisis, even as Jeremiah was in prison, God still spoke to him. In crisis, God is going to give you a word. In crisis, God is going to speak to you. In crisis, the best thing that we can do as a nation, the best thing that you, we can do as individuals is to seek a rema word, is to seek a word from God. And when God speaks, it doesn't matter. The situation might look desperate. The situation might look bad. The situation might look uh, like uh, you might make decisions that look uh, irrational. You may make decisions that are not prudent. But the issue is you've heard from God. One thing I, I like about this is that Jeremiah in prison, he's hearing from God. Jeremiah who is in prison because of telling the king the truth is in prison. Praise God. We are in crisis in the world. The world economy is collapsing. The world economy is not working. Things are not working out. The what is going to sustain us, what is going to keep us is when we listen to what heaven is saying and let's follow the directions of heaven. Let's go to Jeremiah. Uh, let's read further. Let's read further. Uh, I want us to read verse 16. 
I want us to read verse 16 and down. Already here, Jeremiah has agreed, he has weighed the shekels, and he has bought the land. And I want you to know that this was a prophetic action. And a prophetic action is something that's done in the physical, that has spiritual power, that releases power in the, in the spirit so that something may happen. Because the reason why God was instructing Jeremiah to buy the piece of land, this, even in that very desperate situation, God was assuring the children of Israel, yes, Jerusalem will be attacked. The, the, the temple is going to be burned down. The walls will be destroyed. But there is a hope for them who believe. There is hope for them who believe. In other words, the, this was a sign that there is, there is hope in the future. All is not lost. Even as, even as uh, Jerusalem and Judah is under siege, is being destroyed, everything is being destroyed, God was assuring his prophet, God was assuring the church, God was assuring Jerusalem and Judah that it will be built again. The, the land will be, land, they, they will be buying and selling of land again. Trade, uh, ma markets will be open. Life will get back to no more. God is going to do to work it out. In his own time, God is going to work it out. And uh, the, at, at this very desperate situation, at this crisis, God was giving a word of hope. I want you to know that even in crisis, in crisis, all is not lost. As, as Judah and Jerusalem was under crisis, was under attack, God was telling Jeremiah, in the future, in the future, there will be selling of land. There will be buying of land. There is going, the economy will pick again. The economy will pick again. I want to talk to you this morning that the economy will pick again. The all is not lost. As long as we believe in God, things are going to work out in the future. All is not lost. All that we need is to hang on there, is to obey the word of God, is to listen to the word of God and hang on there because in his own good time God is going to make all things beautiful amen God is going to make all things beautiful and in verse 16 after I had given the deed of the purchase to, Bar to Baruch son of Neria I pray to the Lord O sovereign Lord you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power outstretched uh, by your great power and outstretched arm. Nothing is too hard for you. You show love to thousands but bring punishment to the father's sin in the laps of their children. I want you to look at this prayer. I want you to look at the prayer of a person who is in prison, a person who is in crisis, a person who, who is not sure of tomorrow. He does not know what happens to his life. He does not know what happens to his nation. He does not know what happens to his people, to his people, his brothers, the, peop the people of Israel. But in that very crisis, in that very desperate situation, Jeremiah looks at God and says a prayer. Jeremiah says a prayer, not out of desperation. He did not pray out of desperation. He started to exalt God. What did he say? In, in, verse, in verse 17, O Lord, O sovereign Lord, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and your outstretched um, nothing is too hard for you. Nothing is too hard for you. Yes, Lord, you have made the heavens and the earth. Jeremiah was looking at the great things that the Lord has done. It looked like it was impossible. It looked like, uh, like Jerusalem will not be built again. Judah is gone. Jerusalem is gone. It's a desperate situation. But in, that, in the midst of that desperate situation, when Jeremiah was in prison, when he was in a crisis, when he did not understand what is to, 
tomorrow holds when he did not understand what tomorrow holds for him but he kept on faith he kept his faith alive he kept on praying he kept on worshiping God he kept on worshiping God and he did not look at the size of his problem he did not look at the size of the problem his nation was going through but one thing I like about Nehemiah he looked at the size of his God and he told God nothing is impossible with you even if this city is destroyed you are able to build it again even if the walls are destroyed you are able you have the capacity you are rebel you are God you're going to build it again praise God this morning I want to tell you that all is not lost all is not lost you might look at yourself and say, well, I don't know what tomorrow holds. I don't know how I'm going to live. I don't know the, how the future of my children will be. But I want, you to, I want to tell you, just as Jeremiah obeyed the word of God, he bought land that, uh, he bought land that was useless or valueless because there was a crisis. The city was under siege and uh, land was useless and uh, he didn't know if he was going to leave but he obeyed the word of God. This morning I want you to look at our sovereign Lord. Look at, uh, look at the maker of heaven and earth and tell that situation and tell that situation my God is able tell that situation that your God is able tell that crisis yes uh, there is a crisis but I'll not go down with this crisis there is a crisis but my God the maker of heaven and earth is mighty there is a crisis yes I refuse to go under with this crisis I refuse to go under with this sickness I refuse to be destroyed by this sickness I know one thing that my God is a, is a maker of heaven and earth and nothing is impossible with him nothing is impossible with God and this is coming from a person who is in prison oh sovereign Lord you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and your stretched arm nothing is too hard for you how many are saying this morning that nothing is too hard for our God Nothing is too hard for our God. Nothing he cannot do. Yes, the land was under siege. Soon it was going to be under the control of the, Babel, uh, of the Babylonians. But the preacher believed the word of God. The, the prophet believed the word of God. Jeremiah was in prison and he was not sure of his freedom. And yet he went ahead and bought the land. In this time, what is going to save us is the word that you hear. It's the rhema word that comes from God. What is going to save the church today is uh, the word that we hear. The word that we hear. Because like I said, this was a prophetic action. Houses and fields and vineyards shall be possessed again in this land. And that was a message of hope in the midst of crisis. They are besieged. The city is surrounded. The Babylonian army and they were very swift and very destructive. They are surrounding the city and uh, the prophet was not sure about the future. The prophet was not sure about the future. But here he goes on he buys the land until and he went back to God and told God I believe in your word I've done what you've to, you've instructed me to do because you've made the heavens and the earth and nothing is impossible with you I want to tell you yes in that very desperate situation that you are going through there is hope there is hope you might look at your children and think uh, things are not going to work. You might look at tomorrow and uh, give up. You might look at the surrounding and say, well, 
I'm not sure of tomorrow. I don't know what will happen. But let me tell you, as long as you're hanging in there on the word of God and you keep faith and hope alive, I want to tell you we are coming out and we are coming out better. I want to tell you that we are coming out and we are coming out better. A situation that looks desperate, the maker of heaven and earth, who is our God, God of Israel, Jehovah, the maker of heaven and earth. Nothing is impossible with him. Nothing he can do. There is nothing that's greater than him. Nothing that has power beyond his power. He is the omnipotent God. All power belongs to him. He is able. Ah, he is able. He is able. Whatever happens, we are going to anchor there. He is able. In verse 27, I see him repeating the same words again. Let me read verse 27. In verse 27 of Jeremiah chapter, chapter 32, I'll read. The, uh, let's read from verse 26. Then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. I'm the Lord, the God of all mankind. Is anything too hard for me? Therefore, this is what the Lord says. I am about to hand this city over to the Babylonians and to the Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon who will capture it. You see, God asked Jeremiah, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. One thing I like about Jeremiah, he was constantly in touch with heaven. Let me say that again. That Jeremiah... Even in the middle of crisis, he was connected to his source. Hallelujah. Let me give you a secret. Even in the midst of crisis, make sure you are connected to your source. Hello? Hello? In the midst of crisis, do what? Connect to your source. Because I see one thing about Jeremiah. <coughs> That he was listening. He was connected to, to, to his source. So he constantly received messages about what was going to happen. He constantly was in touch with his, uh, with his source, God the Father. And he constantly received messages from God. In times of crisis, let's pray more. Let's get connected to the source. Let's get connected to your source. Hallelujah. You know, when we know that you're born again, born again meaning that uh, we've been born again with water and blood, meaning we are converted, meaning we are children of God. When we, you, when we are children of God, the easiest way to stay in crisis is to make sure that you don't get anxious, you don't get overwhelmed, you get connected to your source. And once you get connected to your source, when everybody was worrying, Jeremiah knew the city would be taken and God will spare his life. Even when there was a crisis and everybody was panicking, Jeremiah was a step ahead. He knew what was going to happen. He even advised the king. He told the king, the king, listen to me. This city will be taken over. To save the city and to save its people, just surrender to Nebuchadnezzar. Surrender to the Babylonians. Surrender to the Babylonians. And that was the easy way out. But he said no. He said no. But you know what? He was taken alive and he met Nebuchadnezzar eye to eye and uh, he was captured and taken to, uh, to Babylon. He was captured and taken to Babylon. But uh, as, uh, <clears throat> as I conclude, I want us to look at Ephesians 3.20. Ephesians 3.20 I'll continue in the next service. We'll also look at uh, Zachariah and how he handled a, 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 the, the, a crisis. The Bible says in Ephesians 3.20, Hallelujah. Ephesians 3.20, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask, 
ask for, we ask or imagine according to his power that's at work within us. If you read that, if you read that scripture, it starts now to him who is able. I want to tell you that it's possible to, to live in crisis, to live positively in a crisis. Now to him, you know, let's concentrate on our God, just like Nehemiah did. His concentration was to his God. So, oh, sovereign God, the maker of heaven and earth. This was Nehemiah, a prisoner. A person who was in a prison, he didn't know if he was going to live or die. He didn't know what the future held, but he kept on. He kept on. He kept on connected to heaven. He kept on speaking to his God. And he, he, the God he was speaking to, he, he was receiving messages. Depending on the power of God to accomplish project. He was depending on the power of God. He was depending on the power of God to save him. He was depending on the power of God to see him through. He was depending on the power of him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask for or imagine. According to his power that's at work in us. That's our God. Even as we are sitting here today. Let's look at his, this God who is able. Let's, let's anchor our faith in him. Let our eyes be fixed on him. Let our eyes be fixed on him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly much more than what we think of or imagine. That's our God. Yes, I'm in this crisis, but I believe God that I'm coming out. Yes, I'm in prison, but I'm not going to die in, the, in prison. This sickness is not going to kill me. This sickness is not going to bring me down. My children will not serve the devil. Yes, there is a crisis. There is a situation. You can see that situation. You can see that crisis, but that's not your end. Your, your end is better. I want you to believe God. You could be in a situation, but that's not your end. That situation does not define you. That situation is not your end. Fix your eyes to him who created you. Fix your eyes to your creator, your maker. He will see you through because all power belongs to him. All authority belongs to him. Yes, Jerusalem is under siege. Judah is under siege. But one thing that I know, this siege will not last forever. This siege will not last forever. Jerusalem will be built again. Buying of land, houses, and even trading will resume again. Because God in heaven, there is God of Israel. There is God in heaven. Hallelujah. There is your God who is able. There is your God. That God that you believe in is able. That God that you've connected to is able. He is able to sort you out in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. I'll read uh, one more scripture. Then we get into a short prayer. One more scripture. In the book of, uh, let's go to the book of uh, Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, uh, 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 chapter 2, verse 9, uh, sorry, chapter 2, chapter 9, 2 uh, Cor uh, Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8, sorry, 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 9, 8, I'll read. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that in all things, at all times, having that you need, you will abound in every good work. Let me read again. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that in all things at all times, having that you need, you will abound in every good work. Amen. And that's my prayer. 
that God is going to make all grace abound. If it's doing business, grace will abound. If it's a prayer, grace will abound. If it's uh, anything that you do, the grace of God will be abundant in your life. The grace of God will, will work for you. The grace of God will make your work easy. Praise God. What you could not do, you'll do because of his grace. What you could not own, you'll own because of his grace. What the doctors have said is impossible. You're going, you're going to be healed because of his grace. I don't, when, when people are saying the economy is bad, you're going to make it through his grace. Let's stand up. All grace will abound. All grace will abound. I want you to look, at, uh, to look at that giant that's pulling you down. I want you to look at that situation that's pulling you down. That situation that's making you have sleepless nights. That situation that when you think about it, you get anxious. I want you to, to confess like uh, Jeremiah confessed a prisoner. Someone who is in prison. Yes, he has been put in by the king because of speaking the truth. The king wanted counsel from, uh, from the man of God. And the man of God gave him the right counsel. He told him, king, listen. This battle you're not going to win. The easiest way out is to surrender to the Babylonians and you leave and this city will live. I want you to say... I want you to see this man of God. Uh, like I said, he was connected to his source. He knew what was going to happen. And he knew that the city would be saved. Not everyone, but the city will be saved. The city will be rebuilt again. I want you to, 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 to focus. He said, O oh, sovereign God, the maker of heaven and earth, I want you to believe that this God is sovereign. This God is powerful. This God, this God is able to sort me. As I live in his presence today, he is able to sort me out. If it's a job that you need, all grace will abound. If it's a, if, whatever you need, whatever you need, all grace will abound because he's able. The maker of heaven and earth is your God. The God who created all things. The God who has, who, who created all things. Who sustains all things. Who keeps all things by his power. He's going to sustain you by his power. He's going to keep you by his power. He's going to heal you by his power. He's going to open doors for you by his power. He will save your children by his power. Oh, Father, we believe in your power. And we believe in you. We believe that you are the God Almighty. The, the maker of heaven and other. Father, all other gods are no gods at all. Your word is the final word. Your word is law. Your word is the word of an authority. Jehovah God, what you say you'll do will happen. You are sure, Jeremiah. Yes, the city is under siege, but you are in control and the city will be rebuilt again. The city they'll be trading in the city again in the name of Jesus father this afternoon we are we are we are we are fixing our eyes unto you our God maker of heaven and earth none of us none of us Jehovah God will be taken by the wave that's currently moving none of us Jehovah God will compromise their faith. None of us, oh God, in this crisis, Jehovah God will be in lack. Father, none of us will die of any sickness and illness because you are able to heal. You are able to heal. 
I'm speaking to diabetes. I'm, I'm speaking to blood sugar. I'm speaking to cancer. I'm speaking to every form of tumor. Oh God, sovereign God, no power belongs to you, maker of heaven and earth. Let your power man first, Father. Let your power man first. Let your power man first on each one of us. Let your power man first, oh God, destroying everything that's not of you. Anything that you did not plant. I declare that it's destroyed. It's destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. Anything that's beseeching our homes, any power, any demonic power that has taken control of our cities, that has taken control of our homes, that has taken control of our children. Oh, sovereign Lord, the maker of heaven and earth, all power belongs to you. All power belongs to you. We destroy every power. We destroy every power through the, through the authority of him who called us. There is hope. There is hope. I see healing taking place. I see deliverance taking place. I see people being set free. Oh, I declare and decree in the name of Jesus Christ that you are free that you are free in the name of Jesus Christ Amen